This video is sponsored by Into the AM. They're currently running a 30% off site wide sale. If you use my code Kevin Coolix at checkout, you get an additional 10% off, but more on them later. So it's been a couple weeks since the winter update went live, guys, and I wanted to go back over and kind of discuss how it actually is playing like as an update this large needs some time to jump in and play all the different aspects feel it out and see like what is working for Halo Infinite. And while I'm sure most of you have been hearing positive things about Halo Infinite's winter update, there are some negatives I definitely want to cover in this video. So if you want to know why the winter update is a bit of a mixed bag, well stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So first let's start off with the positives and one of the shining gems of this update is Forge. Forge has brought like a whole new breath of life into this game. Every week now I'm like actually genuinely excited to jump in and play some new content that the community has created and get a chance to play with you guys on stream which has been a ton of fun. It's almost like there's actual content within Halo Infinite to play and the crazy thing about it is this community driven there's always something new and that just creates a really fun experience to jump in and play and there's some really great things coming on the way because we've only just scratched the surface of what's possible with Halo Infinite's Forge. Currently a work in progress someone created Simon in the game and he said he wants to try to make this into like a 1v1 experience so then if you lose well you die so it's kind of a bit of a squid game kind of experience playing Halo Infinite's Forge which is I mean like come on how is this not like a fun party game it'd be a fantastic one to play I'll definitely make some content on it for sure because I think it'd be a, just like a really fun video to make. Infinite Forges is currently working on a re make of Damnation but in the banished art style. And if you guys know anything about Infinite Forges, not only do his maps look absolutely incredible like dev map quality forging, but they actually are functioning properly as are very well tested and like I said like the aesthetic of it is just going to be incredible and be able to play Damnation once again, but in Halo Infinite and in the current art style, that like, yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. Now the person created this location table where it basically he says he wants to use it in a way to probably choose your spawn location maybe on larger scale maps but it shows a live update of player locations on the holographic table so maybe even like a commander like mode from battlefield being put into halo infinite i mean i'm all for that but you don't have to wait very long at all to have some awesome clothing wear to put on yourself right now thanks to today's sponsor into the am into the AM are a team of artists and creators who share a common vision. They see clothing as a canvas to express what drives you. Since 2012, they developed premium apparel that elevates self-expression and provides unparalleled comfort for wherever your passions take you. Into the AM recently sent me some apparel to check out and honestly guys, I'm really enjoying the stuff. I like the art style they put on the shirts and I also got some cool joggers to go with it that fit me really well. If you're not into all the crazy styles, don't worry, they have some simple tees for you as well. They fit great, they feel great, and I genuinely do enjoy their products. Right now, Into the AM is currently running a site-wide 30% off sale that lasts until December 4th, just in time for the holiday gift-giving season. But wait, there's more! If you use my code KevinCollects, you receive an additional 10% off of your purchase. Plus, I get a little kickback and help support the channel as well. Into the AM has been a long-time sponsor of the channel, and I genuinely do enjoy their products a lot. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you much, Into the AM, for sponsoring the video. So let's get right back into those details. Though it does seem like there's a bit of an issue when it comes to how Forge works when it comes to the in-game experience and also Halo Waypoint. Let me show you what I'm talking about right here. So I have Halo Infinite opened up right now and right now say I want to play Castle Wars. I'll go under book my bookmarks right here wait for the map to load up and obviously I don't have seven pages of stuff I want to scroll through here. I mean I can just like go each individual page and kind of find it but if I type in like say Castle it doesn't actually sort anything. If I put in like in like name and descending, castle doesn't show up at all. So like searching keywords for me just doesn't work at all. And even organizing it by name, like A to Z, it doesn't actually organize things A to Z for me. It just still pretty much keeps it random for the most part. So let's just pick a map like Monitor 2 High Rise right here. And so then if I go to mode right here and I go to my bookmarks and type in say any one of these modes right here. So if I want to play Husky Raid on this map, right? Uh, if I select it, it doesn't work because it doesn't have the icon it has like this default icon here so it doesn't load in properly so what i need to do then is back out to the community page go under what say modes right here and then if i type in husky into the chat right here then i can actually go in unbookmark it which then says saving bookmark for whatever reason up here in the upper right hand corner and then I'll actually have to check it again, which then it, it's like some weird desync thing that happens when it comes to Halo Infinite's uh, custom game modes and stuff like that. So it's really weird. So now if I go into the mode editor 
go into my bookmarks. And then I also, then I basically have to do, since the keyword search doesn't actually work, I have to kind of scroll through and look for one that does have a icon on it like this right here for this game mode. Then I can actually select it. It's really annoying and I really hope something like this gets fixed. Most of the times I'm selecting links based off of what I'm seeing from Halo Waypoint or on Twitter. I'll bookmark it from the Waypoint website, but then I go to play in a game and it doesn't work. So right now I highly suggest if you're gonna bookmark anything, do it in game or do this workaround that I've been using within my custom game nights. A feature I know a lot of people are gonna be sleeping on with the winter update is campaign co-op. And I've been saying this since the flight that I had a chance to play it, but guys, seriously, Halo Infinite's campaign is designed from the ground up to be played with co-op. There's a reason why at each farm there are four locations to choose your weapons, not because it just gives you more variety of where to choose your weapons, but to give people the opportunity to play and pick out things that they like. Like. You can truly lose track of time playing in the open world of Halo Infinite. When I was playing the flight, I was with my friend, I was like, okay, I can give you like an hour, we'll play that. But then I was like, okay, three hours later, I was like, okay, dude, I gotta stop, I gotta mow the lawn or something. And for all you achievement grinders out there, there were 24 new achievements to jump into play. So if you're like, well, I have nothing else to do, well, you wanna play Halo? Grind for some challenges or for some achievements. It's actually a lot of fun. My only gripe with campaign co-op though is that it always goes with the person who has made the least progress within the campaign as their save. Now I do like it how everyone's making progress who's in the game, so that's really nice. Though there are some things that would be like, man, I wish I could just play this mission or this section of the game with my friends. Like, oh, this one base in the middle of the game was really fun. We should jump in and play that. Or like that one mission where you have to jump to the three different beam emitter towers to complete the objective. I thought that was a really fun, like open world type of like main campaign mission. But you have to stick with the person who has made the least amount of progress. So it kind of like anchors everyone down, which actually kind of deters me from playing. But I do like the aspect of having to be able to make progress while you're playing with your friends. Unlike previously, where you were only making progress on the host game. But I feel like it's just kind of like how you had to do it. If you want to have progression for everyone who's playing, you kind of have to go with this route. So I understand it. I just wish there was a way around it. Now we had a lot of time to look over the sandbox updates. We've talked about it on the channel here multiple times, what was coming. And now I finally had a chance to dig my teeth in, play it a bunch and really formulate a good opinion of what, whether or not these buffs and nerfs for the sandbox or changes were good for the game. Let me start off with saying about the Pulse Carbine and Plaza Pistol buffs were absolutely needed. And I'm actually picking up the Pulse Carbine now because it actually functions as it should within the sandbox. So the idea of the weapon is that you put a couple bursts onto a player to get them one shot, switch to your battle rifle or kinetic weapon, get that headshot. That's kind of how that weapon is designed. It's not really designed to get you kills, it's helped to help you. It's designed to help you get kills. But the thing was that the tracking was so slow and terrible that trying to use it at all was kind of like a death sentence. But now that the projectiles have been sped up a lot with this pulse carbine, it's actually very useful. I'm not sleeping on it anymore. You shouldn't be either. Pick up that pulse carbine, guys. It's gonna be good. Now the plasma pistol definitely it received a good buff, but what the thing is now, it looks like there's been an issue since they brought back the trigger dead zones from season two's launch that caused a weapon jamming with the banner rifle. Now it seems to be a jamming with the plasma pistol that hasn't really been addressed since launch. Before the update, I would be able to just kind of spam my trigger and the plasma pistol would shoot its fastest. But now when I do it, this is what happens. I'm, as you can see, like if you look at the trigger icon and then look at my plasma pistol, like, it's not shooting at the correct speed. And it doesn't matter what my trigger dead zones are, I change them around a thousand times, it does not fix the issue. Um, before the update, this was not a problem, so I don't know what the issue is, but it's actually very annoying. Um, and as soon as I can get a clip of the BR jamming to you, I will. So yeah, it looks like weapon jamming is back in Halo Infinite. Now, I personally haven't experienced it a whole lot because most times with the plasma pistol, I'm doing the charge shot for the noob combo, but I have been firing it and I have noticed it misfiring a couple times. I haven't noticed any misfires with the battle rifle though, but Spartan is a pro player and he knows the ins and outs of Halo better than I do. So I would take his word on the jamming thing, but I haven't really experienced it with the battle rifle, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video. And the commando buff, I'm a little concerned on. I've seen pros been shredding people with this commando rifle update. And for the most part, like it's not that anything that they, they improved the damage or anything. I think they just kind of reduced the spread and caused a little bit more aim assist with it to have it be a little bit stickier. So I think they helped with the average player being able to pick up the commander rifle and do well with it. But I feel like with a pro player, that might really mess up the balance when it comes to ranked experiences as the commando does kill faster than the battle rifle. And I've been able to do a lot more like fully auto fire on players to get headshots pretty easy now. So 
This one I'm like a little concerned about, but I think for the general public, I think it's gonna work out really well, but for the high end gameplay, the commander rifle might be a bit of an issue. And like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna talk about that battle rifle nerf. And from what I've really seen, I haven't really noticed it much of a change when it comes to the battle rifle. Obviously they nerfed the red relical range. They nerfed a little bit of this and that, just to kind of make it so it's not so effective over range, which I'm really glad about that. Cause I do feel like the battle rifle was a little too good. If you're playing just team Slayer and pick up a battle rifle, it literally feels like the best weapon on the map. But it still feels good to use the battle rifle, so I think this was a proper nerf. Baby steps towards where you want them to go, but it's good not to have drastic swings left and right. Now when it comes to other sandbox changes we had, like the drop weapon nerf, which I actually do like. I feel like that was an unintuitive feature within Halo Infinite, which I think it was kind of a cool feature, but I don't think it was really good made for the game and really designed to be that way. Though dropping your weapon, if you program it to a paddle actually does have its benefits still as you don't have to take your thumbs off the stick to change your weapon so most players who are playing at high level gameplay which really do utilize the drop weapon feature you can actually still benefit from it without having to have it be an advantageous thing literally in game being able to switch your weapon faster but you can have it be more advantageous of not having to take your thumbs off the sticks to switch your weapon Sword trading added in where now if a player has a low health with a sword and goes for an attack but the other player counters with a melee you actually do deal damage and you guys can actually trade which I think is a good change right there. The sword has definitely become a much more of a very aggressive weapon with Halo 4, with Halo Infinite especially from Halo 5 as well with the, now with the advanced movements and also the equipment. Sword has been pretty lethal especially on maps like Recharge where there's much more close quarters engagements around corners so not to see that get changed right there. Snap slide being removed. I'm actually okay with that. Or if you guys don't know what snap sliding is, essentially it's a way to jump, land on a surface, and then twist your character in a way to where it actually creates like a launching effect. You can see like right here, you can do some really zany stuff when it comes to this feature. Now, it definitely is difficult to pull off. Again, it only really affect like the top 1% of players, but I think this would be something that would kind of affect the gameplay meta at high level gameplays, especially in HCS games. You'd probably be seeing people zooming around like this. You'd be like, what the heck are they doing? This is a little different than just curb sliding, which was definitely an unintended feature. But I think this is a, one that has a little bit too advantageous where it actually can break map flow. So I'm actually glad to see that snap sliding has been removed. Though I do think it was a really cool skill gap for movement. But one feature in the sandbox that just wasn't addressed at all was the Mangler still within ranked. The Mangler has been GA'd from competitive Halo for the majority of it actually and I'm surprised to see that it's just not being used still and still in the ranked maps for whatever reason I don't know why this wasn't touched at all with the winter update it should have been removed I've seen players say that you should replace the mangler with the sidekick on a lot of maps which I would absolutely agree with as the sidekick does take skill to shoot even though it has bloom but it doesn't get a different way to have some more weapons to be able to utilize on the sandbox besides just the battle rifle when it comes to ranked play I'm hoping before the launch of season two in February for HCS we will see a change with the mangler probably just getting removed completely from ranked and leave that into social but as soon as we get some more information on that you know I'll share with you guys here on the channel now what will we be playing with this new content what well, we have new modes as in covert one flag i finally had a chance to jump in and play it and it actually is a pretty good way to grind xp as the matches don't last very long it's a fun kind of like little side game that someone created i think just to kind of have something new to play with comes to this update though it's definitely not a mode that i would see myself coming back and genuinely want to play covert one flag it's kind of a cool like yeah just one off we'll just play it and have some fun kind of thing but uh nothing that i would really be like oh my god this needs to come back in halo kind of thing Bot Boot Camp recently came back. I know it didn't come with the winter update. It was actually taken away with the winter update, but it just recently came back. And I'm actually really enjoying it because it's like the finally a way for me to kind of just casually play Social Halo while also making progress on XP and stuff like that. I made a video talking about that if you want to talk about it. It's like basically a cheat code when it comes to grinding XP and completing challenges with Halo Infinite, which I absolutely love that. And a great thing of the game finally starting to feel more like a live service is that we have rotational playlists. As you can see, we have a roadmap when it comes to different playlists coming in. We have different things for events, core rotational, social rotational, and rank. So this can be something almost new to play pretty much every week you have to play Halo Infinite, which is fantastic. We have the winter contingency event coming in on December 20th, which I'm assuming we probably have a drop pod most likely on that day as well. More on that in a different video when we get some more information for sure. But if you guys want to see what the playlists are going to play like, well, pause the video and check it out. Now the new maps of Argyle and detachment 
are pretty good for the most part. I mean, Dead Detachment's like a fun map for sure. And also playing on Argyle is pretty good. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that Argyle's too big. I don't really think so. I think that maybe it's a little bit of a larger size map, but the way it's gonna play out as players are just kind of like facing directly at each other when it comes to the flow of the map, that you'll be coming across more engagements in the middle, so I think it'd be fine. Though it does seem like the sandbox that's available on Argyle can cause a bit of an issue. Pro player Spurn pointed this out, I gotta keep referencing him, but he's very vocal on Twitter, so I get some insights of how the pros are really feeling about the map, you know? Then there are four commandos, which we talked about earlier, maybe being a little too good. Two banner rifles, two pulse carbines, two disruptors, two grapples, two bulldogs, two snipers, two needlers, two fusion coils, one repulsor, and one campo, camo, and he says esports ready, which obviously is being very sarcastic about that. I would actually think that looking at this list, I'm like, that's a little much, especially with the four commandos, especially how good the commando is now. Two bulldogs and two snipers as well. It can be a bit much, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this being changed in any way in the future, where this map might be a little bit more balanced, because right now it's almost feeling like a fiesta mode, especially with even having the fusion coils in ranked that you can throw at players. I mean, I definitely don't agree with that. I mean, they removed the fusion coils when it comes to Catalyst in, from Social into Ranked, but then they didn't do that for Argyle. That just seems a little bit odd. So we'll definitely keep an eye on Argyle, see if anything changes in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if things did change with it though. Now, one of the biggest quality of life improvements for this update is progression and it's actually fantastic the changes made to the xp earning in this game has just feel like it's been lifting the shackles off of me while playing this game because now you have match xp which just rewards you from playing the game mainly and then a little bit of bonuses from how you perform and then your challenges which i always thought they need to be this way not until the winter update they actually are where they they're meant to be kind of like supplemental like supportive little xp boosts rather than the reason why you progress through the game that is how challenges are meant to be made and that's exactly what they do now in Halo Infinite and it's been like such a clarity of mind I guess is the way to put it or just like I literally feel like the shackles have been taken off of me in Halo Infinite and now I can just play the game how I like and obviously if I want to optimize my XP earn rates I can you know focus on doing challenges and different, different doing playing different modes but uh, for the most part it's just play the game which is exactly what it needs to be, especially where we are right now with population in Halo Infinite. We're doing quite well actually for ourselves with this update, uh, though obviously we're not like up there with like Call of Duty Fortnite and stuff like that, but you know, we're competing with like Destiny on Xbox, which is cool. And the more agnostic, as they phrased it, uh, challenge system is great just cause then like, okay, I just need to get kills with a battle rifle. I can play a lot of modes to get a kill with a battle rifle, which is just exactly how things need to be. Now let's also talk about the battle pass, which is again, still the only form of progression, which is sad, though we do know that 343 is currently working on, on a career ranking progression system that's just way down the line most likely my guess at earliest that would come in would probably be winter of 2023 but again we'll keep you up to date as soon as we get some more information on that but the items in the battle pass are great it's just kind of weird that like it took them a year for us to get this content that we saw actually in promotional materials before the launch of the game actually available for players to get that's only 30 tiers but for the most part, I really enjoy it. But I do have my gripes with the battle pass, but it's mainly how they do like paired items, like shoulder pads, for example, where they have their own individual tier, where I feel like they really should be like one tier for a left and right shoulder pad if it's identical. And either give players like challenge swaps or XP boost or something like that that's a little bit more useful. But I have a feeling 3 for 3 did this just so they can kind of stretch out the content a little bit more, which I totally see that. I totally understand that. As a YouTuber, you try to stretch out to the 8-10 minute mark. That's just like a personal gripe of mine. But overall, like that's fine. Like it's a really, really good battle pass and it's fun to kind of grind through it. But the progression making through the battle pass is faster and it's way easier and way less stressful. And the shackles have been lifted for the match XP to where you can actually just play the game and make progress. So the winter update, final verdict, is a good, bad, mixed, bad kind of thing? Well, I'd lean towards mainly a good thing. This is definitely the biggest update we've ever had in Halo Infinite, uh, but that definitely came with its own issues as well, as pretty much every update comes with every game ever. There are definitely some aspects where I was kind of curious, especially with the sandbox, going like, why did that change? Or why has that not been changed? Or we're keeping an eye on things like Argyle Sandbox. And I would not be surprised to see things change when it comes to bot bootcamp XP grinding, because it's super easy in that. And also maybe the earn rate of match XP probably, my guess, would be diminished a bit when it comes to the season three update. But guys, like Forge is just incredible. Limitless amounts of content. It's so much fun. If you guys want to check out one of the coolest maps ever made in Halo Infinite Forge, check out this video right here. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.